In this video, we will discuss that how we can implement classes in JavaScript and all the uh, features of uh, classes in uh, JavaScript. In JavaScript classes, there are some really interesting features that we will discuss. We can do the inheritance, we can define the members and so on. And there is also ES6 classes concept which has a class syntax just like similar to in Java. We will also see that how we can implement ES6 classes. ES6 classes is a syntax that is actually a wrap around the JavaScript function based classes. And we'll see that how we can work with ES6 classes. Why do we need to learn ES6 classes? Because React.js and React Native, we can work in React.js and React Native with ES6 classes syntax. And also we can define the function based components or the class based components. So let's see how we can work with the JavaScript classes. So one thing is really important that we must know that JavaScript is not an object oriented programming language but the JavaScript is a prototype based language. So class based language and the prototype based language, these are the two types of language. So class based language actually, they are the object oriented programming languages such as C++, C Sharp, Java. They are actually class, class based languages and really object oriented programming languages. In this, we can actually define the classes and instances and so on. In the other hand, JavaScript is actually an object based language because we have the objects and the primitives and we work with the objects in the functions and so on. And that is based on prototypes. We call these objects as a prototypes rather than class based. So prototype based language such as JavaScript does not make this uh, distinction. It simply has objects. So we work with the objects and uh, with the help of these objects and the prototype based language, we can achieve the somehow uh, the, the behavior of classes uh, in JavaScript. So in the class based languages, we actually define the class uh, having the separate class definition and inside that class definition, we have the constructors and multiple constructors we can have and we can have the instance variables as well. We can have the methods, members, getter and setters and so on. And then we create the object using the new operator and we can instantiate the object of class. And that's how we work with the uh, object oriented or class based languages. In other, uh, in other way, in uh, JavaScript, it follows the same model, but it does not have the class definition, which means that we don't have the separate constructors and so on, just like in classes. But instead, we actually define the constructor function, which means that every function, or we just define the function and we define the fields inside that function. And that constructor function is the object. So we create the object of that constructor function and we uh, take the advantage of classes we use the new operator and with the help of new operator we can instantiate the object of that specific function so that's how actually we achieve the classes or we create the instance of a specific uh, object and we have the constructor only so every function in javascript can be treated as a constructor of a specific class later we can assign or attach different properties with that specific uh, javascript based function or we call it a class so in javascript if we summarize javascript has the uh, a constructor only and that constructor behaves just like class. So here is the example code. On the left side, we have a C sharp or a Java syntax, which is a class base. And in that we have the class definition and inside that class definition, we have the in two uh, instance variables. And if we want to define the constructor uh, of this class, we can define the inside the body of this class. And when we create the object, we create, we declare the object with the name of the class and the object name, and we use new operator and we initialize the object. And to retrieve the public properties, we can have the public and private properties. Uh, we can use the object name and the property name. This is the simplest example of uh, a class in Java or C sharp language. Other way, if we talk about the prototype based language such as JavaScript, so we have a function, we don't have a class keyword uh, because it's a function based language and the prototype based language. So we define the function just like a function with the parentheses. And you should see here in the class, we don't have the parentheses. So we have the function just like a normal function. And we use this operator with the help of this operator, we can define the instances. So these are the two instance variables having some initial value, just like in the example over here in the class. To define the object, we know that we have the var, we have const, and we have the let types uh, in the JavaScript. And in the JavaScript, we define the variables with those constructs. We can use the new operator and we can initialize the instance of the class 
in JavaScript. In this case, this class or this function is deconstructed itself. So it's the class and it's also deconstructed. These members by default, they are public. We have not defined that either they are public or private. Although in a newer version of standards, they are actually working on the public members and the private members. But that public and private member support is not available in the, all the platforms and all the interpreters we have on the client side. So it's not like very much common and famous right now. But by default, uh, I must say that these are public. We don't need to define the access modifier for this. So these are the public types and we can access them directly through the object. So this is the basic or the uh, very initial example of a prototype based language and in this how we can achieve a class, how we can create the class and how we can access the members or in other way how we can create or access the fields of a class in JavaScript with the help of object. So we can create the object with the new operator just like in the classes. Uh, left hand side of uh, this equal operator is a bit different. Uh, we can declare the objects with the object name but here we can have the var only and we can declare the object and we can uh, initialize or instantiate this object with the help of new operator just like in classes and we can similarly just like in classes we access the public members we access through the object name dot and then we use the field name that we want to access and that field is public in classes in javascript it's by default public and we use this operator to define the fields with this uh, function or I must say that the constructor. So the constructor and the class is just the same. We can also implement the inheritance in uh, JavaScript classes. And there are actually several ways how we define the constructor function. So uh, in the employee hierarchy over here, we have the uh, topmost class or the base class is employee. And then we have the drive class manager, worker B and salesperson and engineer. Uh, these are two classes which are actually the derived classes of uh, worker B. So these are the child classes and the parent classes worker B and the employee class is the parent class of worker B. So to implement such type of hierarchy, it really depends that how or what kind of system we want to implement and when, what kind of features we want in a constructor when we define the constructor. Normally it's a uh, practice that when we create a constructor, we uh, or we create the object and uh, with the help of that object creation, we normally initialize some of the very basic fields of that specific class. We normally do that. And for this, definitely we need to have a constructor which actually accepts some uh, arguments that should be received through the user when user is creating the object. So here is the example of inheritance between the employee and the manager. So employee and the manager, uh, we are creating the inheritance in this code. So we have the employee class, you already know that how we can define the class uh, through the constructor. So this is the class and the constructor as well and having two fields right now, name and the department. And we also have the manager class, which is actually a separate class. We have not yet connected and it has the tasks, which is a string. And uh, this is the one field uh, only with the help of uh, manager dot prototype. So with the help of uh, class name or the function name, we have the prototype field available in JavaScript. So with the help of prototype, we define or we tell the JavaScript interpreter that which one is the prototype or the parent class of that specific class. So in this case, we are specifying over here that employee is actually the parent class of the manager. So manager dot prototype employee. If you want to call the uh, constructor while creating the object of manager, because in this case, uh, we are just defining or specifying that manager is the employee class and you know about the object or in programming. So the inherit when inheritance is done, uh, all the uh, properties, fields and the function, they are accessible through the child class and available under unless you actually restrict that through the abstraction and so on. So when we create the object of manager, so manager should be able to have the fields of the task and also name and depart department. That's how one of the feature of inheritance is the, the usability. So that because every employee must have the name and the department because otherwise employee does not exist. So employee must have the name department. There could be other fields as well, such as the joining date and the experience and so on other fields, how much you want to extend. It depends. So anyways, 
so when we create the object, you know that how we create the object with the var and the object name. So manager object is equal to new manager. So with the help of manager object, we can access the department as well because we have the inheritance. And uh, although we are not initializing something, we will look into it that how we can create the object and how we can initialize the fields while creating the object as well. So in this example, we are actually focused on the inheritance part only. So to create the employee object, we already done that. Uh, just the employee object and employee can access the name and the department only because uh, that belongs to employee only. But manager can access the tasks, can access the department and also can access the name property or name field as well because we have achieve the inheritance through the prototype if you want to call the default constructor it depends it's not necessary to make a call but uh, let's say for example uh, in later example we see that how we can pass the let's say for example name department and the task while creating the object so two fields which are name and department we want to set those fields inside this employee so we can set send those fields by taking through the manager constructor we will pass to the uh, to the constructor of the employee so that uh, manager object contains all the data that we set while creating the object of a manager. So let's write some code example for the classes and the inheritance. So I will create a class for person and I will create the inheritance or the relationship between the person and the student in a small let's say for example student management system. So one thing is that we have the name of the person and uh, I can initialize with the default value, let's say for example, person name. And I can also have the another class that is a student. And student specified field could be the program he's registered in. He can have uh, a registration number and he can have some other properties such as courses and so on, which are actually very specific to the student only. Let's say for example, this dot. So these are the default values that I will initialize. So if I create the object of person initially, let's say for example. So let's say for example, uh, I define the object or declare the object and then I will use the new operator and use the person class or the function and initialize the object. I can initially log pobj dot name and access the name field over here so the person name which is the or I can say the dummy name that is a hard coded value with this and if I want to initialize that value I can use peobj dot name with some student So now this value has been initialized and we see the output. How we create the relationship between the student and the person? It's easy. We need to define through the prototype. So with the prototype, we tell that person and student has the relationship. And in this case, this is the child or the derived class of person. Now let's create the object of student. And student object would have all the fields which are actually in the person, which is the name, which is the number, and the program as well, because name is the uh, property in the person class only. So let's console.log sobj dot name. I will just comment that out for the moment. So now we are expecting that we will get the output as dummy name. But unfortunately, we are getting the class name over here, which means that uh, this name is somehow reserved in uh, JavaScript, which returns the name of the parent class somehow in this case, the object having the name of the parent class. Uh, I did not go in deeper into this that what is name and then how it's working and why it's working. You see that with the object of person, it was working fine, was returning the dummy name. Uh, but in the student or the derived class, it's returning the name, just the name of the class over here or the constructor, we can say, which means that we avoid using the name. So I can use the first name and the last name.
so we have uh, first name undefined over here and the reason is that we actually did not initialize this first name over here so we can do this in two ways one is that we default we call the constructor of the person and now with this call it will actually initialize the instance fields so with the help of this call I'm actually calling the constructor the default constructor in this case I can say and uh, then it would be initialized otherwise it will just create the relationship and if I don't initialize it uh, I will have it undefined or I can use in this way because fields would be accessible I can use that field I can uh, let's say for example student name so in this case I am actually initializing uh, when created the object so constructor with the default values which are initialized if I want to do that while creating the object I need to put a call to the default constructor so that it can initialize the values so, so this constructor will be called and then first name and the last name will be initialized so if I let's say for example comment this out and I create the object of student and I call or access the last name and uh, it will give me undefined so, so, so we can actually call make a call and then we can make uh, defined and then dummy last name would be printed because it would be initialized with this constructor call we can define the object properties or the class properties in two ways as I explained earlier that JavaScript has some really interesting things in classes as compared to normal class based languages so one thing is that let's say for example if you look at this code I'm defining a property contact over here so manager class actually it does not contain any contact property so in normal languages or the class based languages we would have an error over here because contact does not exist or, or the manager class does not contain any field with the contact but we can define the field with the object and we can associate with that object only so let's say for example we have the manager object and then we create or define the contact property or the variable name at the runtime so that contact would be associated with this m object with the manager object only it means that if you create the another object uh, of a manager class you will not have the contact we can also define the properties uh, on the runtime which are associated with the class for this just like uh, inheritance we use the prototype again with the class name we use the prototype keyword and then with the help of prototype we can define the another field uh, at the runtime uh, that manager does not contain the contact and after that that manager class would have the contact property so whenever we create the object of a manager we will have that property available for all the objects of a manager class whenever we create the object let's define some properties uh, with the student class so we have learned two things that one is object specific property let's say for example if I say that that specific student has a specific property and I want to create and associate with that student object only so let's say for example I want to say that the skills property that is associated or skills field that is associated with the specific student only so in this case I would say let's say for example he has the skills array he knows Java he knows C++ and JavaScript and the student first name is John and if I just remove this for the moment so console.log I would say that sobj dot skills and these are the skills of this specific student only and uh, if I create another object sobj2 uh, by the way we can also create the object without the parenthesis so parenthesis is actually good practice if we work if you work in multiple languages so normally languages follow these syntax for creating the object so I normally uh, follow the uh, features which are actually in the common in all the language also or sometimes put the semicolon you see over here otherwise you can just create in, 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 in this way so console.log sobj2 dot skills 
So this first object having these skills and the other is undefined because skills actually does not exist. Uh, if you, I say that I want to permanently associate the the property with the class which actually does not exist, I can also do that. Student dot prototype dot let's say for example courses, and uh, that is uh, having some initial value. Let's say for example uh, an empty array in this case. So that courses is actually available. For example, uh, intro to computers. These are two courses which are actually associated, and let's print that. For this one and for this student, so we have two student objects over here. So the output would be skills and the courses which are actually defined over here for the student. We also need to change this to the object two because we are talking about the second object over here. And uh, with the skills which actually does not exist with that specific object because that skills actually exists with that specific object and that is actually created on the runtime. For the courses, they are actually they they don't create on the uh, on the class, they are actually created, the courses field actually created and associated with this class. So all the objects would have the courses. So if I see that in the list, we have the courses program and the registration. So object properties are useful. Uh, in this example, if you see that we have an object property which is associated with this class, which is speciality and uh, for the employee. Uh, and also we have this speciality with the engineer as well. So employee is the parent class and the worker B is the drive class and engineer is the drive class of worker B. And when we create the object of an engineer by default, that an engineer would have the speciality of code. So there is also one way that we can uh, specify a field which is uh, created in on the runtime. And later on we can actually extend the fields or the uh, properties of already created classes instead of modifying those classes on our own. There is a possibility that when we create the constructor, the constructor takes some arguments and based on that we actually define or create initialize the properties. In this example, we are creating the employee object having uh, just the first argument only. We are not passing the second argument and in JavaScript we know that it's not a problem. JavaScript interpreter won't mind on this that if you are calling this with the single argument or the multiple arguments. But in other programming languages we know that uh, that would be an error that zero or the one argument constructor does not exist. So you have to define that. So in this case, we are passing this name over here and that would be received over here. But for the department, when we access this property with the object, it is undefined. So one way is that we can define the property in a way so that if user pass something or if, if, it, if it is not defined, uh, then we actually assign that value if it's undefined. If it's undefined, we assign the value. So in this case, we are actually passing the name and department and we are checking over here that if name exists, the value exists, we assign that value. Or in this case, if it's not defined or uh, it's undefined, user did not pass any value, we can actually use the any default value and then we can sign. As you remember that in ES6, we can initialize the parameters at the time of uh, declaration over here and we can uh, define the value. We can also do that in other way. Anyways, uh, in this case, if we are not passing the department, it would have the default value. Let's say for example, in this case, we are assigning that string. Also in the uh, previous example, if we look at it, we can define some initial value for the project's empty uh, array and uh, also for this empty string and empty string uh, for the user when user is creating the object of a class without passing the parameters. One another thing is that uh, we can pass on those parameters to, from the drive class to the parent class as we normally do uh, in uh, inheritance in modern languages Java and C sharp C++ we do that. To do that we have multiple ways one way is that we use base. So with the help of base, we define that, for example, in this engineer, engineer is the drive class of worker B. So we are not using the call, we are using the base. 
and we tell that the base of this class or the base class is worker b and we call the base constructor which is the worker b constructor or worker b class in javascript we know that we don't have class and constructor separately we have the constructor itself a class so we are passing the name which is received over here and we are passing the projects and we are passing the match and so on uh, passing the uh, department over here and we are passing the project right so in this case we are passing over here and from here name and the department would set in a employee class and we tell that this is the base class of employee and then this dot base we are passing or setting the name and the department passing as it is to the parent class another way of uh, calling the parent class constructor is call as we have already seen that we can use the call to call the constructor or the pass the values in this case we are passing let's suppose i'm creating the employee or manager object which is the drive class of employee and when we are creating the manager we are passing the name we are passing the department and we are passing the string comma separated uh, the tasks so when we pass over here name department and the task and we print the department we get the journal although we are passing the department which is services so how to set that department and the name in the parent class with the help of call it's just like base similar to base that after the this keyword we pass all the parameters to our parent constructor or the parent class constructor so in this case when we pass or when we call this call will go to the name and the services as a department over here and then this will come over here will pass to the parent class and will set over here with the full name and the department and when we print out the department with the help of manager we will get the services because it would set when we pass from here to there let's work with the example we were working before i will just remove and clean some code over here to see that how we can implement the inheritance and set the values when we pass from here so let's say for example we are passing registration number and the program and we are passing the first name and the last name over here and we set the registration number whatever passed by the user and the program at the creating the object so when we create the student object we are passing the registration number and the program so let's say So we have registration number in program that we are passing at the time of creation of the object over here. And uh, how about because a student does not contain only the registration number and the program, but student is a drive class of person class, and person class having the first name and the last name. Another thing is that how about if we create the object of a student with an uh, empty arguments or with no arguments. So in this case we have undefined and undefined. We have one way is that we define some uh, or we say that no registration number and we say that no program so if it's not defined it would have some default value one way is this way that we can do this another way is that we can assign at the at over here as we are working over here with the vanilla javascript and this feature is introduced in es6 so somehow if we are not working entirely with es6 we should not do this we should avoid this and definitely when we are working with es6 classes so we will not be using the function based uh, syntax for the javascript classes so this is purely for the vanilla javascript when we are defining the default value over here another way if you remember that we used to check that if it's not defined or not with the help of type of so type of this is not equal to undefined so if it's uh, not undefined we assign it as it is otherwise we assign the default value right so this is the way we used to do the things in the vanilla javascript so default value because we are not passing some value and if we pass some value let's for example reg number we are getting the dash number over here and this would work so one way is this second way is this with the help of vanilla javascript and if we want to use the es6 feature we can assign it over here let's say no reg number so 
So if I'm passing empty, so it's having no right number, which is defined automatically. Now let's talk about if we are passing the name and the first name and the last name and the session name in the program to this program and how we can pass to the parent class. So the name is John and having some registration number and the program is so when if we call this uh, constructor having or passing these two values to the constructor of the student so as we know the behavior of function that first two arguments would be received over here and then the registration number and the program and actually the registration number and the program is over here so to do this, uh, we need to pass or get the arguments over here. So let's say first name and the last name and the registration number and then the program. So in this case, we can get the registration number into the registration number argument and the program into the program argument. And then we need to pass the first name and the last name uh, above to the parent class. So if we use the call uh, after this parameter, I can send the first name and the last name which can receive over here and it would set over here. So the first name and the last name. And uh, we also need to print that. So John David, this is the program and uh, this is the first name and the last name we are setting when creating the object and we are receiving over here and from here we are receiving or sending it to there and then from here we are actually uh, setting these name the second way of doing this is this dot base so base is student and this dot with the help of base call we can pass the first name and the last name so with the help of base we can tell the parent class and we are calling the parent class constructor like this so we have two ways with the help of call and base we can achieve that so that's how we can implement the inheritance in uh, prototype base javascript we have classes we have inheritance we are passing the parameters we can define the runtime objects and the properties associated with the class or associated with the objects only so that's how we can work with the prototype base. Next, we will learn how we can work with ES6 classes in JavaScript. In this video, we will discuss that how we can implement classes in JavaScript and all the uh, features of uh, classes in uh, JavaScript. In JavaScript classes, there are some really interesting features that we will discuss.